In this video, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the BobCam Standard and the BobCam Pro. Over here on the left, we have a part that's been programmed with Standard, and on the right, one that's been programmed with Pro, and they're both the same identical part. Let's go ahead and look at some of the tool paths used on the Standard. Now, in here, we actually used the Z-Level Rough to rough the part out, and then we used a Z-Level Finishing toolpath to come in and finish. Now there's still some uncut areas in here that we'll need to come back and finish, such as these flat areas over here on the bottom, as well as the flat areas on the sides over here. We've cut away three quarters of the model so that we could see the inside a little bit better. Let's go ahead and take a look at the difference between these two. Now in here we use the Z-Level Rough and Finish, which is a waterline toolpath, which is more or less just a pocket that steps down and cuts around the part. We had to use a very small tool on this on the finishing pass because of the small internal radius around this cavity. Now, some of the big differences between the two versions, if we come look at the Pro on the right, what we used for the roughing was our advanced roughing. We'll go ahead and show that tool path. Now, first thing that you'll notice in here is difference is that we actually have the flat areas machined as well the advanced roughing will cut open pockets or open shape areas. This works out very good in both a 2D part and a 3D part. Any area that you have that isn't a closed shape, the advanced roughing will be able to detect and cut and run the tool over the edge to give you a good finish. Now the other thing to notice here is also that our step over on this was not as tight. The reason was because in here, this radius, we don't have to come in and worry about machining this radius. We can use a larger tool to rough this out and to finish, and then just use a smaller tool and use the rest machining to come in and cut these uncut areas. What the BobCam Pro does is, in the advanced roughing, you have an option to turn on rest roughing. What this does is this actually analyzes the part, finds the uncut areas based off of a previous tool size, then machines only the uncut areas using the smaller tool and tool path that will Z-level cut inside of these uncut areas. So in this case we could see this small radius which was eighth of an inch which we want rough with a much larger tool to cut this down to size so we used three quarters of an inch to rough and then came back and used the rest machining with an eighth of an inch bit saving us time and also giving us a little more rigidity in the tool for a better finish and also faster feed rates while running the part. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the other tool paths that we've used. In here we've also used our pencil feature or our pencil machining strategy as well as our flat lands. Let's go ahead and turn these on and we'll turn off the advanced roughing. In here the pink represents the flat lands tool path and what that does is that detects all of the flat areas on the model and we'll cut those separately aside from the 3D tool path saving time. Now in the standard example there is no flat lands tool path to use so what you'd need to do if using the standard is come in and manually make a pocket for each of the flat areas as well as find them yourself where in this case the software detects it automatically now on this simple part there's only three areas that are flat inside of this cavity on a more complex part that can become very encumbersome now the next tool path that we have is also the pencil milling now the pencil milling, what this is, is it's just a finishing tool path but what it allows the tool to do is trace directly around radiuses or radii that are, have the same value so what that does is that gives us a very good finish between these surfaces where we have the single line cut or the pencil line that follows around the radius now there's also another option but we'll have to look at that on another part or our constant cusp or our equal distant tool path. But you could see just already from two tool paths or three tool paths there's a big difference in how we can approach machining the parts.